What a tune. And both sets of supporters joining in on that one. I don't think many of the Irish will have any clue of the words, but they clapped along in unison and in a very respectful way, joining in in the Italian national anthem. This is Five Live for the BBC, Euro 2016. On the day that we've already discovered England will play Iceland in the last 16. This game and the Sweden-Belgium game, which is taking place at the same time, are going to have a huge bearing on who Wales and Northern Ireland will face in the last 16 and indeed whether they will meet each other. For the Republic of Ireland, it's very straightforward. Win, they go through to the last 16, lose or draw, and Martin O'Neill's team will be going home. Ireland wearing the chain strip again tonight. White shirts, green socks, white uh, green shorts, white socks, and the Italians in their traditional blue jerseys, the white shorts and the blue socks. But it's a much, much changed Italian team tonight. Eight changes in total from the coach Antonio Conte for the Republic of Ireland four changes two of them in the centre of defence where it's now Shane Duffy and Richard Kyo preferred to John O'Shea and Kieran Clark further up the field for the first time at this tournament the Irish start with two up front Shane Long alongside Daryl Murphy Murphy who had a fantastic season in the championship two years ago got 27 goals for Ipswich but he's never killed Kevin Cabad scored an international goal he's up front alongside Shane Long tonight yeah that's the one that's been levelled at him uh, Daryl Murphy no international goal but He's, he's probably had he, he's had uh, some some good games when he's played up front. He's been more of a, a provider, more of a, more providing assist for Shane Long. The partnership has worked. I envisage he'll go back to the same system that we saw the uh, Republic of Ireland using against Sweden. The diamond shape will probably be in play again, and I think it suits Ireland because I think it'll get we'll get more bodies further up the pitch, and it allows us to play in Italy's half. So a lot of well-known names missing for the Italians, none more so than Gianluigi Buffon, the goalkeeper. The record caps holder only on the bench. He has been struggling with a fever, but it's Salvatore Sirigu who will be the goalkeeper. Three central defenders, Benucci and Barzagli, we know well from Juventus. And Angelo Agbona starts for the first time at Euro 2016 alongside them, the West Ham defender. Tiago Motta will be in the engine room in midfield. We're underway. Benedeschi on the right-hand side. De Shelia on the left, the AC Milan defender with Sturaro and Florenzi in the midfield and Zaza and Immobile up front. The first big hit goes in and it's on Discheglio and that will be a free kick to Italy and Roy Keane spoke a lot about his Republic of Ireland players getting stuck into the Italians tonight. Well, I think Seamus Coleman yeah. here has just got a very metaphorical welcome to Lille to Mattia Discheglio. Yeah, Discheglio felt that, didn't he, from Coleman going. Seamus, Seamus Coleman captain tonight, big responsibility on him. He could now... Uh, realistically be Republic of Ireland's captain over the next 10 years he's probably one of the only players that would get in a number of sides um, out of the Irish squad that's, that we have here at the Euro so he's a big honour on Seamus Coleman he's just tried to lay a marker down early another leaning in challenge from Robbie Brady just staying on the right side of the law but uh, the Republic of Ireland here showing that they are going to front up to the Italians Italy nil Republic of Ireland nil throw in on the left hand side for Stephen Ward he's playing alongside Duffy and Joe in the centre Coleman the right back James McCarthy in the middle of midfield and it's very attacking with Jeff Hendrick and James McLean either side of a diamond yeah. Robbie Brady has the peak of that diamond and the two up front Daryl Murphy and Shane Long throw in for Bernadeschi on the right hand side for Italy and that's going to go out of play once again and forward will come Barzagli to take it well, Shane Long's fulfilling the role, Connor, that John Walters would have played. He, it's an inside forward, if you like. He, he always drops back into midfield on the right-hand side, but his responsibility and the onus is on Shane Long to get in support of Daryl Murphy. This is Shane Tuffy, former Everton player, now at Blackburn, and he clears long and hopeful and into a channel for Shane Long to run after. And across comes Ogbonna and heads it out for a throw-in. Throw-in for the Republic of Ireland, attacking position down the right-hand side. And it's taken quickly to Jeff Hendrick. Back to Coleman on the right-hand side. Huge noise here inside the stadium at Lille. The pitch is not in great nick. Low ball to the feet of Long. He goes down under a challenge. Referee says play on. Boos from the Republic of Ireland fans. But Italy here in danger of coming on the counter-attack with Federico Bernadeschi on the right-hand side. And James McLean comes across, takes advantage of a hesitation by Bernadeschi. And the ball goes out of play for an Italian throw. I'm pleased with that, Connor. The, the, the players look right up for it. He's saying a couple of challenges going in. Robbie Brady, Seamus Coleman early. That time, James McLean 
we look for a response and we're all looking for a response after that Belgian game they certainly in the first few minutes just set a few markers down Italy have yet to concede a goal at this tournament it's passed by Ogbonna onto De Celio, and then a ball which is swung cross field from left to right onto Bernadeschi on this right hand side he's controlled this one much better chest down to his feet now he needs some support and Stefano Storaro will come to provide that good block though for Ireland as the ball is intercepted by Ward and now James McLean can break to the halfway line gives it low to the feet of Daryl Murphy the Ipswich Town striker this time he is fouled by Thiago Motta it's a free kick to the Irish on the halfway line still nil-nil good centre forward play from Daryl Murphy he give James McLean the option he comes short took his first touch well bought the foul just Ireland just started this game reasonably well nil-nil here in Lille nil-nil also between Sweden and Belgium at the moment Italy already through and Belgium would progress with both Sweden and the Republic of Ireland going out that is as it stands where the permutations can swing violently as the evening continues possession for the Republic of Ireland which Seamus Coleman gets out of a tight angle with a ball to Jeff Hendrick now towards the edge of the penalty area Shane Long first time ball back into midfield and to Robbie Brady who's got Ward on the left hand side now into the penalty area this is Daryl Murphy back to goal surrounded by three Italian defenders and they've dealt with that very neatly and between them Bernadeschi and Barzagli oh they've given it away and back into the penalty area now Long tried to get a touch Brady might have helped it on for himself and Italy very very grateful to clear away and the Irish fans are enjoying this well Italy giving the ball away two or three times now that's just putting the onus on Republic of Ireland to get into, into the top gear Daryl Murphy again showing for the ball crowded out by a few players but just think that when it comes to Shane Long can he have a swing at it with his left foot he's looking for a real intricate pass to try and find Robbie Brady have a little swing at it with your left foot and get a strike in early James McLean right up against the touchline on the left hand side and it, it may have well it looked like it might have been a throw in for the Republic of Ireland but they say for the Italians Antonio Conte gave a glare to the assistant referee and he's out already prowling on the edge of his technical area is the Italy coach soon to be the Chelsea boss and how impressive he has been in this tournament so far nobody was tipping Italy to win Euro 2016 before the tournament they have won their first two games now there is an error maybe by Shane Duffy but good defending to help him out by McCarthy James McCarthy then penalised for a foul on Alessandro Florenzi and Martin O'Neill is out on the edge of the technical area Oh, it's going to be a free kick to the Republic of yeah, Ireland. He's given offside, Connor. It was excellent, actually, from James McCarthy. He recognised that Shane Duffy was out of position. He immediately filtered back into position to see the danger. Very, very tight. I don't actually think it was offside. Not a great decision from the assistant, but good play from James McCarthy to sense the danger. Italy nil, Republic of Ireland nil. In possession with Darren Randolph of West Ham and ooh, signs of nerves there a routine pass from him that he's got very wrong and he's put out for a throw into Italy that's the pitch Connor he didn't want to launch it upfield in case he got a bobble it was a poor back pass actually to him it was going towards the centre of his goal that's maybe the, the rule that goalkeepers want when you pass it back to your keeper make sure the ball is away from the goal so if the keeper does miss it it only goes for a corner yep. this is the same stadium you, you may have seen at the France against Switzerland game where it dug up very much the playing surface that was the one where the ball burst and the jerseys were ripping and there's another firm challenge this time by Hendrick in midfield on Florenzi the Roma midfielder and this time the referee from Romania comes across and says free kick to Italy midway inside the Republic of Ireland half. he gets the ball yeah. but it, it's reckless he's sliding it is in a little bit yeah two, two big challenges going again it's Robbie Brady with the initial one but as you say Jeff Hendrick coming in on Florenzi well I think the referee's let him get away with it so he's let one or two ride at the moment hasn't he Jeff Hendrick who's one of three Republic of Ireland players who are on a yellow card only two of them on the field himself and McCarthy uh, but if the Republic of Ireland were to go through if he was to be booked he would miss the next game free kick to Italy they tried a rehearsed move that, that doesn't come off but again not a great first touch by was that Kyo down there uh, he did very well to get into the position oh sorry it's Shane Duffy uh, but then his first touch took the ball away from him and what should have been a routine clearance ends up being put out for an Italian throw so the Azzurri remain on the attack on the right hand side Stefano Storaro prepares to take the number 14 into the penalty area towards Immobile and that will be a corner corner to Italy on the right hand side still nil nil yeah well done there Richard Keogh sense the danger again the Immobile was just getting into a good position it was on a bit of an angle he might have taken the strike on or at least pulled it back for a, a teammate but Keogh saw that dealt with it well smell of sulphur in the air someone's let off a firework and of course the roof is closed and the smoke can't escape 
And De Chilio prepares to take this corner on the right-hand side. Rolls it back to Bernadeschi. A testing one right in on top of the goalkeeper. And it's headed in front of him and out for a corner. Corner to Italy. Shane Duffy's header over his own crossbar. Well, he did well there, Duffy. He knows that's where, you, as a defender, you just deal with it. Bonucci in behind, in between him, himself and Randolph. But Duffy did well. 11 men back inside the penalty area for the Republic of Ireland. Corner to Italy. Florenzi prepares to take it on the far side. Good delivery. Pendy of pace on that towards the back post. Just overstruck. Flashed over the top of Kevin Coleman. Uh, Seamus Coleman's head. And that goes out for a goal kick to the Republic of Ireland. So remember, at the moment, Sweden are playing Belgium. And let's get an update on that from John Akers. Sweden nil, Belgium nil. Eight minutes gone. It's been lively. Belgium, a couple of efforts. Witzel with a shot over the bar from 25 yards. And Lukaku dragged a shot wide with his left foot. Sweden have had their first shot on target of the tournament. Berg with a right foot half volley. Good save, Courtois. Trevor Sinclair, bright start. Yeah, really good start. Um, Obviously, Sweden realised they need a win. So they're going for it. Um, quite expansive football from both teams and a uh, big, big chance for Berg. If he could have put that either side of Courtois, they would have been 1-0 up. But looking forward to this one. Sweden nil, Belgium nil. Thank you, John and Trevor. Belgium only need a point against Sweden to secure qualification as runners-up. And uh, Belgium, who would only go out tonight if they lose and the Republic of Ireland win. Now, here is Jeff Hendrick. He's 12 yards outside the Italian penalty area. He's been allowed to turn. Hits it on his left boot. Oh, just too high of the left-hand top corner. What a shot from Jeff Hendrick, who very nearly scored against the Swedes in the Republic of Ireland's opening game. He's done everything right here. Onto his left boot. Maybe slightly leaning back. And it's heading. Oh, it's so it's similar to the goal Dimitri Payet scored for France against the Romanians on the opening night but this one's just off target agonisingly what a strike Connor brilliant from Daryl Murphy he wins the initial header it's the second ball that Jeff Hendrick anticipated he gets himself into a good position as you say just shifted it onto his left foot Sirigu was definitely beaten it was a great strike nil nil Agbada with defending to do under pressure from Shane Long here inside the Italian penalty area but the referee blows the whistle and it's a foul against Shane Long who's not happy about that and it's a free kick to the Italians on the edge of their penalty area. But the closest we've come to a goal so far, left-footed shot from Jeff Hendrick. That was oh. inches away from being an excellent goal. It was brilliant. It was, I mean, as you say, he's a slightly off-balance Jeff Hendrick, so he did well to actually get the strike and a clean strike as he did. Just shifted it away from Motta onto his left foot. So Sirigu was beaten, 100% beaten, but unfortunately for him and for Republic of Ireland, it's just off target. Richard Kyo jumps, and there's a foul on him. And it's a free kick to the Republic of Ireland. The referee being quite whistle-happy in the opening 10 minutes here. I mean, it's balanced. He's doing it for both teams. Yes. But he's, he's blowing up rather than let play continue. And Robbie Brady now comes back to the halfway line to take this free kick. Remember, draw no good to the Republic of Ireland tonight. They must score. They must win to stay in the competition. So a free kick like this, they're all going forward as if it's a corner. Both centre-halves up in attack for Ireland. Brady preparing to take this free kick. Left-footed, high. It's going to come down outside the penalty area. Agbana gets up and jumps, but he's beaten in the air by Shane Duffy, and that goes wide. And it's a goal kick to Italy, and it's still nil-nil. It's a really difficult header for Shane Duffy. He's backing off. He's on towards the corner of the 18-yard box. I would maybe want Robbie Brady just to try and flight that more centrally, maybe around the D area or just inside the penalty box. Well, if you're... A fan of Northern Ireland or Wales listening in and aware that that this game and the Sweden-Belgium game very much affects who Wales and Northern Ireland will play in the next round. If Republic of Ireland or Sweden win tonight in this group, then Wales will play Northern Ireland in Paris. Ireland trying to come forward here. Ball towards the edge of the penalty area. McLean can't get onto it. And the goalkeeper, Sirigu, comes out and clears away to the right-hand side. So... If there's a winner, either Republic of Ireland win here or Sweden win in Nice, then Wales will play Republic uh, Northern Ireland in Paris. If not, then Northern Ireland will play France in Lyon and Wales will play Turkey. All the games involving the Hope Nations, of course, commentary here on Five Live from the BBC. Free kick to Italy on the edge of the penalty area. Ireland beginning on the front foot here, Kevin Kilban. Will they be rewarded? Well, you would hope so. There's certainly a positive start, getting right amongst the Italian players, as you say there, but just a poor option there from Jeff Henry. Chose the wrong option. He had two runners to his right-hand side. He tried to go for a more intricate through ball, trying to find Daryl Murphy. That was a wrong, wrong choice for me there. Jeff Hendrick of Derby County 
really making a name for himself at this tournament as the ball is cleared away by his club teammate Richard Kyo. And again, it's long and it's direct and it's looking for Daryl Murphy and the Italians are taking no chances. Leonardo, de Benu- uh, Leonardo Benucci doesn't take a risk, just puts it out for an Ireland throw. Well, it's better quality of ball played forward. It's not just who forward, uh, Connie. You can see there's space in behind, drop it in behind and you've got willing runners with Daryl Murphy and Shane Long. Daryl Murphy did so well, Benucci had to deal with it because Sirigu was just coming out of his area and a little bit, um, a little bit uh, confusion between the centre half and goalkeeper there, but good running from uh, Daryl Murphy to force that issue. Antonio Conte was out of his technical area there, appealing that Stephen Ward had handled the ball. The referee was happy it was ball to hand. In any event, Ireland weren't able to deliver a cross, but they have got another throw in here, and Ward has backed off the playing field right up against the advertising hoardings wants as long a run as possible here launches it in almost too far into the penalty area Benucci is able to clear it away Hendrick who's already having a stormer picks it up on the edge of the penalty area played from Ward to Brady Brady tried to help it on first time might still come here for Jeff Hendrick very difficult one to control though down on the byline he fails to do so it's a goal kick to Italy it's still nil-nil in Lille well the Republic of Ireland is first to every loose ball aren't they Connor? they're making the challenge they're snapping in early and they're winning the second balls and they're building from there not too much quality when they're getting around the final third but that's where they're getting the success and the rewards at the moment final day of the group stage it's a rest day tomorrow and the day after at Euro 2016 will the Republic of Ireland be heading home to Dublin or will they be staying on to enjoy the party here in France ball goes out of play and the assistant referee says throw into Ireland and Antonio Conte goes and gives him his mindful and he's certainly doing his best to be a presence down there the man who will soon be Chelsea coach. Stephen Ward to take the throw in. Midway inside the Italian half on the left-hand side. Movement ahead of him from McLean and from Murphy. And now Robbie Brady drops short. And it's back to Ward again. And then it's a stab towards the edge of the Italian penalty area. Murphy's done well in the air. And controlled on the deck by McLean. Shane Long set off towards the back post. McLean tries to cross it in. Comes in low and towards the front post. And it's cleared away by Diago Motta. But the Italians are making hard work of clearing it away here. And they're relieved to hear the referee's whistle for a foul on Bernadeschi. And it's a free kick to Italy. Yeah, Bernadeschi there. He felt the presence of Stephen Ward behind him went over very easily just think there's Stephen Ward he's got him back towards his own goal just stand your ground hold your ground force him backwards he's keeping the pressure on from an Irish perspective nil nil it remains for now remember Sweden would qualify with a win otherwise they're out nil nil at the moment between Sweden and Belgium elsewhere the only way Ireland can finish second in the group is if they win and Sweden also win and Ireland would need a winning margin to be at least two goals greater than Sweden. So, you know, if Sweden were to win 1-0, Ireland would need to win 3-0. Realistically, that seems a very tall order. Ireland's best hope is to go through as one of the best players. You just take the win, Conor. You take the win. If you get that, anything else, a bonus from that. Yeah, but a win of any nature yes. will do for the Republic of Ireland. Win 1-0, win 10-9, doesn't matter. They will go through to the last 16. And if the Republic of Ireland are to win here tonight, then it'll be Wales against Northern Ireland in Paris in the last 16. Here come the Italians. Good ball to the right-hand side to Bernadeschi and then an acrobatic challenge from Stephen Ward. I think he's hurt himself more than anything and now he threw himself into the challenge there of Bernadeschi. Bernadeschi also injured but able to hobble back to his feet. Stephen Ward seems to have really hurt himself in the way that he lunged in there on the edge of the Ireland penalty area. Yeah, it was actually miscontrolled, wasn't it, from Bernadeschi? He, he let the ball or allowed the ball to get away from him. Stephen Ward read that, made a challenge and it was almost Bernadeschi's momentum taking him straight in toward. It was a follow-through, wasn't it? It was the... It was the initial challenge went in. It was the follow through, the little kick at the end of it that just caught Stephen Ward. Poor challenge actually from Bernadeschi as well because he tried to leave a bit on him. Though. He knows exactly what he's doing. Both players receiving treatment down on the pitch. Plenty of players coming to the touchline and getting some water on board. It's very warm here under the closed roof in Lille. So here is how the last 16 is shaping up. You're not missing any live action here with treatment being given on the pitch. On Saturday, Switzerland will play Poland in Saint-Étienne. That'll be the lunchtime game. It'll be Wales against either Turkey or Northern Ireland in Paris at 5 o'clock. And Croatia will play Portugal in Lons. That'll be the nighttime game on Saturday. On Sunday, it gets more complicated. It'll either be France against Northern Ireland, France against Turkey, or France against the Republic of Ireland. Uh, That would be the lunchtime game in Lyon on Sunday with Germany against Slovakia. We know that will be here in Lille later on on Sunday and Hungary against 
Uh, the runners-up of this group could be Belgium in Toulouse, 8 o'clock on Sunday night. We're back underway here in Lille. Both players are going to be OK to continue. Remember, if you haven't heard the news earlier on, England will play Iceland in the knockout stages here at Euro 2016. Throw in for Italy on the right-hand side by Storaro of Juventus, very inexperienced at this level. It's only his third international cap. If he missed the team news earlier, eight changes for Italy. This is their B team, effectively. Bernadeschi on the right-hand side, running towards Stephen Ward. Passes earlier this time to Immobile. Can he turn? James McLean comes back. Good, strong challenge for McLean. And the ball goes out of play. And it's a throw into Italy, but McLean will be happy with that. Yeah, excellent initiative from James McCarthy as well. Spotting the danger. Good movement from Immobile out wide, but James McCarthy tracked him. And then James McLean mopped up at the end excellent from Ireland they're out they're very good out of possession at the moment Ireland Storaro throws into the penalty area towards Zaza who's hardly had a touch so far and that time well his touch is virtually meaningless it just puts it out of play for a goal kick to the Republic of Ireland remember Italy regardless of what happens here are not only going through but they are going through as group winners the Republic of Ireland must win to have any chance of progressing and that goes the same for Sweden, who are still nil-nil against Belgium tonight. Goal kick to the Republic of Ireland. Darren Randolph prepares to take. Right foot at clearance, straight down the centre of the field, looking for Daryl Murphy, controlled very confidently on his chest by Bernadeschi, but he looked so confident when he took it down that he ran yeah. it out of play, too That's, confident. It's happening a lot, isn't it? The second touch on the play, first touch OK, the second touch is getting away from players constantly throughout. Now, whether or not that's the pitch, it does look slick, but the pitch that we, we spoke about before the game, Connor, is quite poor, isn't it? You know, it's, it's going to yeah. cut up. No, plenty of sand you can see even from our position down here. They've put extra sand on the pitch to try and fill out the gaps. But this was the playing surface which Didier Deschamps, the French coach, was very unhappy to, uh, to be involved in. Uh, just a little chat going on here. The referee in discussion with Shane Long and Angelo Agbonna, the West Ham defender. Just a little word with the two of them who've been niggling away, just little, just trying to get it on each other's nerves into the penalty area. Stephen Ward has come forward to take this throw in for the Republic of Ireland towards Daryl Murphy. Comes off an Italian boot, I think it was Thiago Motta, and that will be another throw in to the Republic of Ireland. The ball boys using the multi-ball system. The throw in comes quickly towards Jeff Hendrick. He's tackled, this time by Bernadeschi. Another throw in to the Republic of Ireland, who've had plenty of territory in this game so far. Ward arches his back, tries to get as much distance as he can in towards Daryl Murphy. Good header though, one in the air. It was Bernadeschi inside the box, comes back out to Ward. And then when Ward tries to play it into the penalty area, Storaro loses his footing on the bad pitch and he slices it out for a throw. Taken quickly by James McLean and that will be a corner. Corner to the Republic of Ireland. Listen to the fans. Positive again, good movement from Stephen Ward getting ahead of James McLean. Bernadeschi did well to track the run but this is positive real positive spells here for the Republic of Ireland I think I saw on our monitor a moment ago a, a mother bringing a very young yes. infant baby uh, down towards the, the exits and I don't know if it's the noise or it's the heat but you could just imagine for a young infant in here I'm sure many people would have seen on social media uh, the video of Irish fans singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star Little Lullaby to a sleeping baby on the metro here in France here comes the corner swung in by Brady head oh well saved finger tipped over the top by Sirigu it was a header on target it was just tipped over Daryl Murphy well that's why he's in the team I wonder if it would have gone in anyway, but the goalkeeper had to be sure. You know what? Corner. It's quite a free header. I think he's in a good position there, Daryl Murphy, to head it down. Good pressure, though, again from the Republic. Now, can there be another good delivery from Robbie Brady? From the corner, left-hand side, towards the back post, towards Murphy again. Italians are claiming that Agbonna was pushed. Referee agrees with that. Push by Daryl Murphy, and that will be a free kick to Italy. It remains nil-nil here. What about the Sweden-Belgium game? John Akers. Nil-nil here to Connor. As you've said, the point good enough for Belgium to come second. It settled down. It was a fast start, but it's become a bit scrappy. Azard's had a run and shot from 25 yards. His shot was blocked, and Ibrahimovic just flicked one up. A volley blocked at close range. Nil-nil. Yes, uh, the Belgians will be... Uh, very interested in the outcome of this game as well. 
and the permutations in Group E, which I don't think are as bad as that head stretching that was going on earlier on when the uh, the Hungary and, and Portugal game was going on, and it seemed to be changing every couple of minutes. But it was a really good listen on Five Live earlier as the ball is pumped forward for the Republic of Ireland by Shane Duffy, controlled on the left hand side by Stephen Ward. It wasn't really in the team at Burnley up until Christmas, but then became a regular from January onwards. Played virtually every game as they won the championship and promotion up to the Premier League. Another good heady header from Shane Duffy. It's the first we're seeing of him in this tournament. Uh, before Euro 2016, a lot of people thought Duffy might start the games, wasn't involved in the starting 11 against uh, Sweden or Belgium up, in, up until now. Agbonna's done well, up against Shane Long. Long tries to nibble back. Agbonna's too strong, releases it into midfield to Serraro, but he's tackled by James McCarthy. And a chance for Ireland to come forward. Now Storaro is lying down injured. The Irish play on. Coleman on the right-hand side. Infield to Robbie Brady. They're not very close to him. Brady tries to get around the first defender. Out to the left-hand side to James McLean. He's got two to aim for the penalty area. And then good defending back there by Thiago Motta to put it out for a yeah, throw. Positive. James McCarthy has been excellent in the start of this game. A lot of pressure on him. I spoke about before the game over in Ireland. He's getting a, a little bit of stick from... TV and radio lads but he's coming into this game today starting in an unfamiliar role playing for the Republic of Ireland but he's playing excellently tonight nil-nil Republic of Ireland are going for it they're, they're giving it a good lash here on the edge of the penalty area Brady was on his right boot lays it off to Hendrick immediately closed down by Florenzi Coleman makes himself available on the right-hand side. This is midway into Italian territory. Republic of Ireland playing right to left as we look down in their chain shirts of white. Here's Jeff Hendrick. Three defenders around him. Gives it to the left-hand side to Stephen Ward, who's seen a lot of the ball in the early stages. He's crossed into the pedal area. Too high for Long, but surely Long is fouled by Ogbonna. Referee is happy for it to play on. Ball goes out of play on the far side. That's a clear foul, Connor. Ogbonna's just jumped into Shane Long as he's going to go and challenge for the ball. Not too much um, in the way of... Um, uh, Irish players uh, approaching the referee to, to um, argue with it but the simple fact was that is a foul good pressure though from Ireland good, good play you know we didn't see that in the Belgian game where they were stringing 10-15 passes together excellent in midfield Hendricks and McCarthy and Robbie Brady all getting on the ball all comfortable in possession that's what we want to see from the players Agbonna had a good first season in English football with West Ham. I think you were with me, Kevin, the night when he scored that late winner against yes. Liverpool in the Cup. As a, a through ball here, trying to play Zaza into the penalty area. Out comes Darren Randolph. And the Republic of Ireland had to be careful on what is a very breaking up pitch. He nearly slid out of the penalty area there with ball in hand. Zaza did fall off the pitch. He was at full pelt. Yeah, good goalkeeping. Randolph. Again, you know, there's been a, a lot of positive at the start of this game. Still not really created one big chance, I suppose. We've had the, the chance, obviously, from Daryl Murphy and the strike from Hendrick. So, for all, Ireland have actually played the way into this game really well. No pressure on their own goal themselves. Got to be a little bit better uh, cutting edge in the final third. Clearance from Randolph goes the entire length of the pitch and into the possession of Sirigu, the Italian goalkeeper, filling the rather large gloves this evening of Gianluigi Buffon. The Italians play it for Bonici, who's, who's so often there playmaker he's the man who's taken over that role from Pirlo of picking out the passes up towards the the front two but this pass is intercepted Hendrick slips as he clears the ball I think that affected how he struck it and it sails over the head of James McLean and goes out for a throw into Italy on the right hand side still nil nil yeah Martin only looking for a little bit of calm there on the bench had comfortable possession Jeff Hendrick just think he can maybe just buy another pass so five ten yard pass rather than hit that long diagonal ball to McLean which was a difficult ball as you say he did actually slip so that forced the error Good work in midfield by Stephen Ward and he's been fouled and it's another free kick to the Republic of Ireland and again it's like it's a corner they all push forward as they must do this isn't an evening in Lille when the Republic of Ireland simply must win Antonio Conte wasn't very pleased with this we're just seeing a replay on our monitors and he is bellowing full pelt still wearing the classic fit Italian dark jacket down there I wonder if that'll last 90 minutes because it's like a sauna in here now he's looking well, isn't he? Got to say that he's got he's got the look. Yeah. He's he's got the threads. He's got the the style. He's got the hair. He certainly does have the yeah, hair. He's the he hair, he yeah. certainly has the hair. Yes, yeah. We'll, yeah. We, we won't go. We back won't to go that. into no, that. We one. won't go into that one now. So free kick for the Republic of Ireland on the left hand side. Robbie Brady standing over it, and he's got multiple targets to aim for. Most of his teammates are up at attack. Here comes the delivery. Really good swinger. Headed down, though, by Barzagli. And then it's brought out of defence by Storaro. 
and this is Bernadeschi but Italy are having to work really hard just to get out of their final third it comes off Robbie Brady it's a throw to Italy that's the quality he possesses Robbie Brady what a ball that is what a brilliant ball it was dealt with really well is it Benucci getting back in there into position no it's exactly. Boz- yeah Bozzali brilliant from him but what a ball Robbie Brady can do that backtracking for the Republic of Ireland Shane Duffy gets there comfortably in head of Florenzi but his pass to the goalkeeper Randolph and the pitch is really bad in that penalty area yeah. and Randolph slips as he tries to clear and puts it out for a corner well it's a poor ball isn't it from Shane Duffy didn't get any feel on the back pass at all always a struggle for Randolph to get anywhere near it Republic of Ireland unnecessarily putting themselves under pressure here big Agbona comes forward for Italy also in there Leonardo Banucci the corner is played short to Bernadetsky on the left hand side he sends it across headed away by James McCarthy who was pushed and that will be a free kick to the Republic of Ireland the most relieved man is Shane Duffy who's completely got away with that dodgy back pass yeah he was again McCarthy brave you know he's been questioned a lot in Ireland and he, I felt from at times James McCarthy because he's played in unfamiliar roles he's played in the right hand side of the diamond this is the role that suits him that he's playing tonight and he's, he's had an outstanding start to this match James McCarthy it is nil-nil here in Group E a lot of talk beforehand about the permutations at the moment with Italy already confirmed as group leaders Belgium nil-nil against Sweden means that Belgium would be in second place and would go through as runners-up in this group that would mean that Sweden and the Republic of Ireland both go out so that is the permutation as things stand Northern Ireland would play France in Lyon Wales would play Turkey the way things are at the moment but it can all change Duffy here to Coleman who's the Republic of Ireland captain tonight infield to James McCarthy back out to Coleman again being put under pressure now the Republic of Ireland defence really for the first time in the game the Italians are beginning to press them uh, Immobile comes forward but Randolph the goalkeeper clears it away here is Storano in midfield good tackle James McCarthy to release now Robbie Brady running strong run he's got McLean outside him to the left hand side McLean steadies himself tries to cross it hits Barzagli it goes out for a corner Republic of Ireland will take that oh taking the ball you know, they put themselves under a little bit of pressure when going back to Darren Randolph but who's the one that's picking up it's Robbie Brady and he's prepared to drive with it 15, 20 yards, freeing up McLean. I just think when it comes to James McLean, could he whip it in first time? Instead of taking the extra touch, give your attackers a chance to get on the end of it. Brady has come across to place the ball for the corner kick. Jeff Hendrick then comes over and has a word, and I think he fancies it as an in-swinger. All 11 Italian players back in the penalty area. Conte's out of his technical area again. Here comes Hendrick with the cross. Good header, though, in there from Zaza, the forward, who was back helping out the defence. This will be picked up by Ward, and he swings it back out to the left-hand side. That's a good ball if Hendrick's onside, and he is. Hendrick into the penalty area, controlled in there by Duffy, and then Long wasn't able to send it goal-bound. It hit Duffy, really, rather than him being able to get any purchase on it. But all the Italians can do is scramble it out for another corner in succession yeah just a high ball hopeful ball from Ward to free up Hendrick wasn't the greatest of crosses but it was the deflection that took it back to um, Shane Duffy actually Shane Long thinks he's offside so he doesn't react to it and he wasn't no if he reacts to that he's getting a strike at goal DeShilio put it out for the corner Shane Long unbeknownst to him was onside corner to the Republic of Ireland who are fronting up here who are giving it a go they must win remember a draw no good to Martin O'Neill's team tonight here comes the delivery from Brady on the far side. Referee's whistle was blown as soon as the ball came in. Now, what's he going to do here? I think that they're saying the whistle was blown before yeah. the kick was taken. I think so, Connor, yeah. I think there's a bit of coming together between Benucci and Shane Long. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I mean, well, it's, I mean, it's not an elbow. He catches him with an elbow. It's not a swung no. elbow. He's leaning into him. And Long, well, maybe does Shane Long go down a bit easily? I'm not well, sure. It's an elbow in the face, Connor. I mean, he's going to take an elbow in the face like that. He's actually running to Benucci's arm. I think it was the assistant behind the goal that actually made that decision as well because he's got a clear view of it. So the quarter's taken once again. Brady, good delivery towards the back post. Goalkeeper was scrambling. And this time it'll be a goal kick. It came off Shane Duffy. Duffy, who's never scored an international goal. He's had a few chances. Great ball in from Brady again. That time, just a little movement of the ball. All staying on side. Mott had actually played them on side, and it's Duffy coming in at the far post. If he actually leaves it, Shane Long's got a free header at goal there, and he just doesn't quite, he's not quite aware of where Shane Long's actually stood. 
Yeah, Shane Long almost up on a piggyback on the back of Shane Duffy. If Duffy had just left it there, Shane Long might have had a chance. We'll go to the Sweden-Belgium game in just a moment. But here come Italy on the attack with a little Florenzi, who's full of tricks. Tries to deliver a pass to the left-hand side to De Chilio, but that's intercepted by Seamus Coleman, and Coleman clears it away towards the halfway line. Now, is that a foul on Long? It is. Free kick to the Republic of Ireland. Come in, John Akers at Sweden-Belgium. Nil-nil, Sweden out as it stands, and Belgium through. Ibrahimovic has come to life a little bit, as has the... The game he's had a shot from 20 yards a yard wide De Bruyne has also had a shot from 20 yards saved by Isaacson it's just come to life a little bit Trevor Sinclair it has De Bruyne he's just starting to show what he's shown us all season in the Premier League he's making some surging runs going forward and at the moment Sweden can't live with him he's got a free kick on the edge of the box about 25 yards out dangerous position Sweden nil Belgium nil thank you John Republic of Ireland fans here hoping to recreate the atmosphere of the 1994 World Cup in New York when Ray Houghton scored the goal and the Irish beat Italy in what was the opening game. Of course, four years ago, the Italians very much getting their revenge with a comfortable win in Poland. And then before all of that, of course, was the quarterfinal at Italia 90 when Salvatore Scalacci broke a lot of Irish hearts and the Italians won 1-0 on their way through to the semi-final. Yeah, I remember that killed me, Connor, when I was a, when I was a young lad. <laughs> remember the finish, Paki Bonner with the save it was, and Scalacci from an angle. Good finish, actually. Paul McGrath sliding in, a whisker yeah. away from blocking it. The memories. As, uh, the ball is played back by Richard Kyo to Randolph. Oh, Randolph was brave. He did a little sidestep around Zaza, was sprinting in at him. Given how the playing surface has really affected... Uh, the goalkeeper that was that was brave but he was efficient and effective and he got away with it and the Republic of Ireland were able to clear the ball away another free kick Storaro there's been a lot of fouls committed in this game so far free kick to Italy on the right hand side of the midfield and of course with eight changes you'd expect Italy to look a little sluggish a little disjointed but well, they've not really created... No. I mean, this is the curse of the commentator coming here, but they've not created much so far, Kevin. Not Cobham. at all. I think they've been slack in possession. The Republic of Ireland have looked so much better in possession. I think they've got up the pitch better. The only problem is there's no real chances from either side created. Ireland have created a couple of openings, the header from Murphy said before and the strike from distance, but other than that, there's no real standout chance for the Republic of Ireland at the moment for all the territorial and all the pressure that they're putting on the Italians. Berucci tried to go long again. He likes to do this. The centre half from inside his own half, he, he plays a long crossfield diagonal ball, trying to release a runner. Uh, Florenzi that time had made the run for him, the Roma midfielder, but it was overstruck by Bonucci, and it goes out for a goal kick to the Republic of Ireland, away to our right-hand side. Nil-nil in Lille. At the moment, the Republic of Ireland are going out of the competition unless they can score a goal. Sweden would also be departing Euro 2016 as things stand. Possession at the back for Ireland with Duffy. This is better though, Connor. They're trying to force the Italians out. They're trying to force them to try and press them a little higher. That then in turn frees up the longer ball. Against Belgium, that just wasn't the case. They, did, they weren't able to keep the ball for five and six passes. Free kick to Ireland. Foul on Stefano Storaro. Uh, by Stefano Storaro on James McLean. So free kick just inside the Italian half. And Robbie Brady and uh, Richard Keogh are just having a little chat there about what they're going to do. Brady, whose delivery has been decent here, and he's, he's just indicating to his teammates, to Duffy, saying, come on, get up there, we've got to go for this. It's almost like Ireland is starting the game the way you would do if there's five minutes to go and you yeah. need a goal. Well, you, know. you know what, how many times we've said that in games, Connor? Why wait until the last 15, 20 minutes? Why not go for it? And Ireland are trying to force the issue. Duffy's up there. Kyo's up there. Brady floats it in. Kyo jumps in the air, gets ahead on it. McLean gets up, might have struck an arm in there. Ireland appealing for a penalty. Falls on deaf ears with the Romanian referee, and Italy are able to clear it away. James McCarthy heads forward once again, comes back, head tennis. Kyo on towards uh, Shane Duffy, the centre back who stayed up there. This is Immobile, but he can't get a touch for Italy. McLean here on the halfway line being put under pressure the ball bounces out of play and that will be a throw in to the Republic of Ireland and I think Martin O'Reilly who's clapping down there Roy Keane watching on they will be pleased of how Ireland are approaching the 50-50 battles here yeah very pleased Roy Keane spoke in the build up to the game about players being comfortable having the bravery to take possession of the ball and they're certainly doing that Jeff Hendricks having an influence mentioned McCarthy as well they're all having the ball taking it in comfortable positions Ireland must win. Italy have only lost two of 23 group stage games at European Championships. Here is Stephen Ward's cross. Looks like it's too close to the goalkeeper, and he does well. Sirigu jumping on his goal line with Long bearing down on him. 
and he gathers the ball high above his head. If you're a reserve goalkeeper for Italy in recent decades, you've not had much experience yeah. <laughs> in the national team, have you, with yeah. Buffon dominating? And we know as well, Syriga, what a good goalkeeper he actually is, Connor. So it's, you know, he's not had too many opportunities to actually prove himself at this level. It's actually a poor ball there from, from Stephen Ward. He knew he was frustrated with himself. Good chance again with Ireland getting bodies into the area. Um, Gianluigi Buffon, who was on 158 caps for Italy, and he's already said he's not retiring until after the 2018 World Cup, so he's probably chasing... How old were the, then? 41, 42? He's 38 at, now. At that so, time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he'd be 40 going 40, on 41. Yeah. But it just seems like he's been around yeah, forever. Well, he has. Gianluigi Buffon, he has. Absolutely has. Right, here comes the Irish. James McLean on the left-hand side. Oh, he's done really well there. And Barzagli takes him down on the edge of the penalty area. And James McLean had the Italian defence worried. Free kick to the Irish. Corner angle of the penalty area, left-hand side. Well, that's exactly James McLean's strength. You know, when he gets in one-on-one, -on -one, actually two-on-one, -on he did so well to get away from the two Italian players, both Bernardeschi and, and Bazzagli. But it was brilliant. Once he gets Bazzagli backing up into the penalty area, he's driving at him, he's prepared to commit players. And that's exactly what James McLean should be doing more and more of. If, if he can drive at the Italian, def Italian defence, one-on-one positions, he might be able to do that and get a penalty. Bazzagli using all his experience there. He, he saw the threat that was yeah. coming from James McLean and he said, right, you're not going any further. The big burly Juventus defender. Free kick to the Republic of Ireland. Can they make this count? A game the Irish must win or they're going home. Hendrick is standing over it as a right-footed option, which would be an in-swinger. Brady would be the left-footed option. And to swing it away from the goalkeeper, who is sufficiently worried to erect a two-man wall, even though this is a long way out. Hendrick runs over it. Brady comes forward. Left-footed delivery. Goalkeeper comes and punches. Only as far as James McCarthy, but the referee blows a whistle. The goalkeeper was impeded. He punched the ball away. Then he was knocked to the ground by Shane Duffy. And it's a free kick to Italy. Yeah, well, Duffy's entitled to go for it. It's good goalkeeping, actually, from Sirigu when Long and Duffy both encroaching on him. Slight slap on the face as well. But, I mean, that's, that's the threat. It was actually poor, but it wasn't Robbie Brady's best ball. He's just a little bit too close to Sirigu. I had to deal with it. Getting a bit frustrated there as well. Now, I just want to confirm here, because Shane Duffy was the player involved in the challenge, but it looks like Shane Long has been booked here. Now, is that something Long has said to the referee, or is it a case of mistaken identity? They both yeah. have similar hairstyles, and they both have a similar beard. I think it is. Yes, Shane Long went in the face of Siriglu. He didn't touch him, but he's shouting at him really bizarrely just trying to, to, to bring a reaction out of the goalkeeper and the referee says that's unsporting conduct he's given him a yellow card I don't mind that though from Shane Long sometimes Shane Long in games you want him to get a bit more fired up you want him to have that little bit of fire in his belly that, because that's what he can do he can cause problems so I don't mind that Connor not the worst thing so yellow card shown both to Long and the goalkeeper Sirigu. Here come the Republic of Ireland again. So much of the attack has been away to our left-hand side. The end, the Italians are defending. That's a good ball. Brady to the right-hand side. Coleman, with time to think about this now. Takes on the fullback. Goes around Florenzi. Pulls it back to the edge of the area. Brady, not enough room to shoot. And the Italians clear it away. Only as far as Ward on the left-hand side. Back in. Good ball. Just too high in there for... Seamus Coleman who'd made a brilliant run into the penalty area but just couldn't get the spring in his heels and Italy with Sirigu clear it away but the Republic of Ireland continue to bang on the door and they've won another free kick here really foul positive, on James Connor. McCarthy positive Connor. this is really positive that's what you want from the Republic of Ireland side over the years they've, been, they've always been at our best when we get into wide areas and cross the ball Seamus Coleman's prepared to do that Stephen Ward getting forward O'Connor as well holding on there as well to Daryl Murphy Daryl Murphy in the pedal area couldn't get off the ground the defender's arm was wrapped around his neck but the free kick given for a different uh, altercation outside the pedal area Brady whose deliveries have been decent here's the latest of them in on top of the goalkeeper and that's good defending again and Sirigu jumps and gathers the ball under pressure and the Italians grateful to regain possession yeah. nil nil just a little over hit again too close but there's holding again in the penalty area that time it's Benucci he's got hold of Shane Duffy pulling him to the ground you know Referees have got to see this because that, this has happened on two occasions now in this game. First dog Bonner and then Benucci. James McCarthy goes in strong again, and this time the referee says that it is a free kick yeah, to Italy. Right. I think it's right. James McCarthy knows that himself as well. He's been impressive, really impressed with him. He's shown a lot of mental strength here, James McCarthy, tonight. The foul on Storaro, the Italians take the free kick. Benucci to the left hand side and Agbonna and back into. Thiago Motta, who's not really been given any chance to pull the strings in this game. 
So, just less than four minutes of normal time to go until the break in Lille. Italy nil, Republic of Ireland nil. Ball cleared away by James McCarthy once again. Barzagli returns it into the Irish half with interest and then McCarthy gets in another tangle with Immobile. Immobile goes down and that's a free kick to Italy. It looks soft. Well, that's a fair challenge. McCarthy again seeing, uh, seeing the danger. Martin O'Neill's not happy with it. Saw the danger. Straight tackle on Immobile. He wins the ball. And I don't know what that... You know, that's a ridiculous decision. Yeah. But you mentioned there about Motta. He was the one player I was worried about coming to the game, Connor, because he does dictate play. He gets on the ball. He controls the tempo. But Republic of Ireland players have got round him. It's more, it's more been the responsibility of Jeff Hendrick. He's locked onto him. And with the youthful, youthfulness of Jeff Hendrick, he's able to run the other way. And Motta can't stay with him. McCarthy stretches, but Immobile is able to shoot anyway. And it's wide to the target. Randolph at full stretch. That's probably the best shot the Italians have had in the game. It has taken them until the 43rd minute, but decent from Immobile. Yeah, best chance for Immobile. Good ball played into him. Actually, the deflection off McCarthy. It takes it back into Immobile's path, but once it's out of his feet on his right foot, Richard Keogh gets out to make the challenge, so he has to go across Darren Randolph, and he's always pulling it wide. He's only ever scored one international goal, Giro Immobile. The man who is now back at Torino on loan from Borussia Dortmund. His move to Germany didn't work. Jurgen Klopp paid 19 million euro to sign him for Dortmund but only scored three goals in the Bundesliga in his first season went to Seville on loan last year he's been at Torino his original club back on loan this past campaign but here he is starting for Italy tonight in a team that Antonio Conte named with eight changes from last time out the Italians have already beaten Belgium and Sweden already assured of winning the group Jeff Hendrick here tries to play it forward for the Republic of Ireland comes back to him helps it on though to Daryl Murphy oh. McLean's in the penalty area goes down they want a penalty nothing doing with the referee huge roar from Irish players and supporters James McLean going down to the penalty area and the referee said no penalty well it's a tackle from now James McCarthy perhaps you'd say he's going down that's a penalty it's a foul that is a foul it's a clear foul on McCarthy from Bernadetti and the referee has got to see it. The only thing you say, maybe he's going down a bit theatrically, but he's the wrong side. It's a poor challenge, and it should be a Republic of Ireland penalty. James McLean opening his body to shoot, and uh, Bernard Esky cannoning into him from the side. No connection to the ball, no attempt to play the ball for the Italian defender. And I think Italy have got away with They've that. got away with it clearly, Connor, because Bernard Bernadette is the wrong side. That's the thing. He's the wrong side, so he can't get back in contact with James McLean. James McLean, to be fair to him, when he feels a contact, he's going over, but it's a clear foul. It's a barge in the back. You know, it's, you, referees have got to see that. They've got to know the game when that's happening, and it's a clear barge on McLean. It should be a penalty. Still nil-nil. Disgruntlement amongst the Irish supporters who have brought nothing but good humour to this tournament so far. Now they're singing a, a little song for the Romanian referee who's already taken charge of Poland's game against Northern Ireland at this uh, competition. But a free kick here on the halfway line, but the Irish wonder was a penalty. Robbie Brady takes it towards the edge of the penalty area. Helped on. Shane Long is in there. Now was that another push? Well, not as clear cut on this occasion. Sirigu comes out and eventually gathers the ball after scrambling a little bit at the byline. Shane Long, who tried to get onto the ball and was crowded out. Well, it's one of those, but I mean, that wasn't anywhere no, near as blatant I don't think as so. the I think that's James just good McClane. defending, Connor. Sure. I, think he's getting, I think it was Benucci or uh, Ogbonna. They're getting across Shane Long. The other one one minute barge in the back. being added on for stoppages at the end of this first half in Lille. A game in which the Republic of Ireland must win or they are out of Euro 2016. Still nil-nil, by the way, in the other game in this group. Sweden against Belgium. This is the, the last of the group games. Here come the Italians. That's a good ball for Immobile. Tries to get it on the edge of the penalty area. Richard Kyo does well. Scampering back and puts it out for a throw. Yeah, Jeff Hendrick got away with that. He allowed the runner to come off him. It's Florenzi getting beyond, beyond Shane Duffy. Shane Duffy having, uh, Duffy having a word with Hendrick. He's got to recognise that run as a midfielder. Ireland were a little bit overran there, three on three. So into this one minute being added on for stoppages the Italians have it on the halfway line Bonucci to Barzagli and then infield from Bernadetsky that's good control from Immobile and then he helps it on to Storaro who's into the penalty area Ward did well came across his presence forced a heavy touch from Storaro and that goes out for a goal kick the Irish fans are still booing what they felt should have been a, a penalty in the other game by the way uh, Sweden against Belgium it is now half time and it is still nil-nil so a reminder 
that if it stays like this, if the Republic of Ireland draw here in Lille, if uh, Sweden draw with Belgium, then it'll be Northern Ireland against France in Lyon in the last 16, and Wales will play Turkey. But if either the Irish or the Swedes can get a victory, then it'll be Wales against Northern Ireland in Paris. There's the booze. There's the whistle for half time. The players leave the field. The Republic of Ireland have given this a right go in the first half. Kevin Kilbad, but still scoreless. Yeah, it's exactly what we wanted from them. I think there was a good tempo at the start of the game. Players in midfield. Hendrick, McCarthy, and McLean always looking to get on the ball. Robbie Brady in behind the two strikers. Those four have been excellent in midfield, and that's been the one positive. The players have been prepared to take the ball and be positive when they've got into the final attack in third. So the only thing it's just missing is that maybe that polished ball, that polished cross in the final third. But I do think it was a penalty, Connor. Well, you can probably hear the boost in the background, Mark Chapman. There is one big talking point here amongst the Republic of Ireland supporters. Was it a foul on James McLean in the penalty area? Should it have been a penalty? It hasn't been given. It's Italy nil, Republic of Ireland nil. Thank you very much, Mark. About to get underway for the second half. No changes in personnel. No score here. And as it stands, no one from Group E will be going through as one of the four best third-place teams. So if nothing changes, Northern Ireland will play France, Wales will take on Turkey, Belgium will play Hungary. That is at the moment. But an Ireland goal can change much of that. It could still be Wales against Northern Ireland. We're waiting for the second half to get started. Republic of Ireland who had chances. Header of the top from Duffy. Shot just wide of the top corner from Jeff Hendrick. And a penalty appeal. Much discussed. And I'm sure there will be much discussion. The notice there, Connor. Chap is just dropping a little bomb on me. Just, little just, dig, yeah. just a little dig as it was coming back. No, we've noticed that. I, I didn't think it was Stonewall. I never said it was Stonewall. I just think it was. I think it was a foul, and it should have been a penalty. I hope he's still listening, Chappers. Um, oh, I'm sure he is. Da Dan Walker on Twitter. That penalty was nailed on. Uproar in the pundits' corner. Highlights on BBC One at 10:55. I always thought Dan Walker was a better class of, uh, of, of presenter that program. Oh. Anyway, you know. But. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> back underway here. Uh, the Republic of Ireland playing from left to right as we look down. The white jerseys, the green shorts, the white socks. Italy in their traditional blue and white. Agbana in possession. One of three central defenders for Italy. Alongside Benucci and Barzali, who are regulars in the team. Agbana, one of eight changes in tonight from Antonio Conte as he shuffles his pack. His side already assured of, of going through to the next round. Already assured of winning the group regardless of what happens here tonight Bernadeschi is fouled on the far side and uh, it looks like this pattern is going to continue mm. Kevin Caban there was a lot of free kicks in that first half yes th there was and, and that shows him again I on, I on the right up for the game no, they're, not, they're not stupid tackles I think the tackles made in, in the, with the right intentions but I think overall Republic of Ireland can be very very pleased the way that, way that, that first half went you know, and Italy have actually, as I said, just at half time there, Connor, it's very, very poor in possession, really poor in possession at times. That's a good ball, though, from Zaza to the right hand side. Benedeschi up in the attack tries to return the ball into Zaza. It's too high, it bounces and it goes out of play for a goal kick. Why is that, Kevin? Is the, the quality of the pitch contributing to that and making it difficult for the Italian style of play? Well, there probably, probably is a little bit of that as well. We're not seeing the side that played against Belgium, that's for, that's for certain. Um, that was a good bit of play actually really good ball from back to front from Ogbonna picking out Zaza with a good ball wide but yeah I, I mean the pitch has got, has got to be a contributing factor Connor you've got to say that it's, it's very poor it's very bobbly and you're not going to see a classic game when you're playing on this sort of pitch yeah, we already know it'll be Italy against Spain in the next round that'll be in Paris at Stade de France I'll be commentating on that one uh, 5 o'clock on Monday here come Italy on the right hand side with Bernadetsky and he's or should out of play good work from Robbie Brady just showed him a channel to run down into Bernadeschi had a heavy touch and he ran it out for a throw in to the Republic of Ireland left full back position for them remember the Irish must score must win that's the one thing though Connor you mentioned there with Bernadeschi getting forward oh hang on Shane Long tries to get in on the back of Benucci the referee says that he's fouled him Benucci hit the deck Long thought he might have had a clean run into the penalty area referee says that Shane Long had fouled Benucci he was too strong there Long well, I tell you what now, that is, that's exactly the same instance. It's probably actually that the McLean's one was more of a push. Slight contact, it's, it's a foul, he touches him, but the penalty was exactly the same. And as I said, it was probably slightly more in favour of, of a penalty than that one. Yeah, no, no, I mean, we're obviously looking with slightly green tinted glasses here in Lille this evening, but, you know, we'll, we'll call it straight throughout. Don't worry about that. I mean, Shane Long, that is a foul. And the free kick was given to the Italians, who have possession now on the halfway line. This is Thiago Motta 
just plays a little one-two at Barzali, comes back again to Motta and rolls it in field to little Florenzi, tries to get something moving, but there's no fluidity from the Italians. They're not getting those little triangular passes moving. And then it's passed back from midfield by Robbie Brady to the goalkeeper, Darren Randolph, and he pumps it straight up the middle of the field where Shane Long jumps, wins the header, can only put it straight up into the air. Coleman tries to come in and smother it almost with his chest there, and the referee gives a free kick inside the centre circle, free kick to the mm. Italians. It's a profile to give away, actually, from Daryl Murphy. Florenzi wasn't in control of the ball, just dragging him back by the shirt. But there's, there are positives again. I think the, I think the Republic of Ireland players now have recognised that the Italian players are not good enough to play through them. They lack real quality, I feel, in, in the middle third of the, of the pitch. Ball headed away by Stephen Ward on the far side. Comes back out to Bernadetsky. Here's a chance to cross towards the far post. There is nobody there. Nobody there. Ball harmless. It goes out of play. Goal kick to the Republic of Ireland. Nil-nil. Yeah, Conti's clapping there in his technical area. He's a bit of a brighter start. They're getting up the pitch a bit better in uh, the start of this half for uh, Italy. But overall, as you're saying to you, Conor, there, I just think the, the, it was the two wide areas, I think, where, where Ireland excelled really in the first half. Seamus Coleman and Stephen Ward, the two fullbacks, they were allowing the two wingbacks, De Chilio and Bernadeschi, to, just to, to push on. And they didn't have the quality, or they don't have the quality to hurt them. So you can allow, with the way that Ireland are playing with a diamond, you know for a fact you're always going to be weaker, a little bit wider, but you can allow those two wingbacks to push on because, again, they don't have the quality that's really going to hurt you in key areas. So at the moment, uh, we're waiting to see if Republic of Ireland can progress. Uh, Belgium and Sweden still at nil-nil. Uh, both those nations could still go out of the, the tournament should results change. And another nation just somewhat sweating on things at the moment in Group D are Turkey, who finished third in the group behind Croatia and Spain, but they are waiting to see if they will go through as one of the best third-place sides. If they do, they could be going through to play Wales. So throw in for the Republic of Ireland, right full-back position, and for Seamus Coleman, who's wearing the captain's armband tonight. Midway inside the Irish half. Throws it down that channel, looking for Shane Long. Good defending by uh, De Chilio. Comes back to Coleman. Infield to Shane Duffy. Right footed down the channel. Agbonna does well to head it. Oh, it's actually gone out of play. I thought he'd kept it in. It's gone out for a throw into the Republic of Ireland down the right hand side. The Irish attacking the end in this half where the majority of their fans are housed. I mean, there are Irish jerseys dotted right around the stadium, but there's a, a condensed green. Uh, area behind that goal in which the Irish are attacking. Duffy here turns under pressure from Simeone Zaza, gives it back to the goalkeeper Randolph. Not That's that bad pass clearance. again. Bad yeah. back pass again, though, uh, from Shane Duffy. He's got to put it away from the goal so because he knows as it's coming back to him there, Darren Randolph, it's bobbling and it's a difficult one. Then he's always almost expecting to bobble over his foot and into the goal. Play it away from the goal. He knows it. I think he's just pointing that himself there, Shane Duffy. Play it away from the goal. If, if a mistake's made, it goes for a corner. James McCarthy did well there just as Kevin was speaking crunched in in a tackle ball goes out of play for a throw into the Republic of Ireland taken by Coleman looking for Long down that right hand side Nod head, heads it on ahead of Agbonna Agbonna might have come in with a high leg there and the referee's assistant is going to go back to indicate just that he just waited a moment to see if Shane Long would benefit from running onto the through ball he nodded it on for himself Agbonna caught him with a high leg and the referees are, well you know We've had our word about them earlier on, but they did wait to see what would happen there and have now given the free kick. Yeah, it's a good decision. Good decision. He sees it. Shane Long anticipating his own flicker and he wants to get on the end of it. He's brave to go in for that, but it's the right decision again. Free kick to the Republic of Ireland. Right-hand side of the midfield. Robbie Brady prepares to take it. Waves a right arm as a signal to his teammates. Here he comes. Left foot a deep delivery. Goalkeepers come a long way and does well. Sirigu gathering it high above his head. And that relieves a lot of pressure for his defence. Yeah, frustration there from the Irish players. Duffy and Keo getting forward. Poor ball again from Brady. Really expect better quality from him. Seven minutes played in the second half. Here comes Storaro over the halfway line for Italy. Gives it infield to Thiago Motta. Helps it on first time to Florenzi. Italy moving from right to left as they come forward in the field. This is De Chilio. Gives it across. Zaza! Just too high. Cut it really well on the volley. Oh, he could hardly have hit that better. Just a few inches too high. That's the most impressive build-up Italy have had in the game. Yeah, excellent play. That time, De Chilio, he's always looking to get back onto his right foot, so you know what he's doing. If you're Seamus Coleman, you can actually arc your run a little bit better. Keep him on his left foot because he doesn't have the quality to hurt you there. Good ball played into a good area. Zaza coming away from goal on his left foot. A little unfortunate, really. He just can't quite get the strike on target. Antonio Conte, just seen a replay of him on our screens. He thought it was in. Conte who wants to make it three wins out of three in the group stages here 
for Italy. James McLean chases down what looked initially to be a, a lost cause, and then Benucci was put under pressure, and Benucci has fouled him. That was in a safe area for like not anywhere near the penalty area, but but this is a good location for a free kick. Yeah, Crossing foul. position on the left. Clear foul, Connor. And again, it just shows that the serious lack of pace that's in the Italy back three players. You know, he had about 10, 10 yards on James McLean there. James McLean made up the yardage. Won his, won his team a free kick and this is where you expect Brady in this sort of area to provide real quality Bonucci who's been linked with a move to Chelsea to join Antonio Conte also been moved uh, linked with a move to Manchester City uh, but the Juventus man giving away this free kick which the Republic of Ireland hope they can benefit from eight and a half minutes played in the second half here in Lille it's nil-nil on five live for the BBC no goals either in the other active game tonight Sweden against Belgium here comes the delivery too much on it poor poor ball from the free kick it's a waste from an Irish point of view and Hendrick and it's over the crossbar and a goal kick to Italy Kevin yeah. Kilbane just trying something different there a little shift to the ball from Robbie Brady it's poor from Hendrick again he's another one that's having a good tournament here should be doing better though goal kick by Sirigu is poor and that's gone straight out of play for a throw into the Irish near the halfway line Ireland fans cheering that behind us two balls on the pitch and uh, Seamus Colvin turns and gives a dirty look to Everett threw the second one back on and the referee is now coming over to have a word now is this to Seamus Colvin he wants to look at the ball and what's this all about oh he's going to do a drop -off. because the throw in had been taken well this is rather pedantic it was a Republic of Ireland throw, so now he does the drop ball, and Immobile just tips it out for a Republic of Ireland throw. Yeah, excellent from Immobile, he recognised that. I think it's the right call, isn't it, from the ref? I think that's what he has to do there, so, you know, yeah. no problem in the end. Ball cleared away by Randolph at the back for the Republic of Ireland, flicked on by Daryl Murphy, controlled wide on the left-hand side by James McLean, 10 yards inside the Italian half. Has to retreat, though, and this is Richard Kyo. And to the left-hand side, Stephen Ward looked a bit under pressure as the ball came to him there and he's given it away. Good work by Barzali up towards Immobile. Little flick off, he was trying to bring Zaza into things. It was the right idea, the execution just a little bit weak. Republic of Ireland get it back again. And Robbie Brady does well to ride one challenge of Storaro. Storaro comes back, Brady does a little swing of the hips to elude the challenge. McLean screaming for the ball out wide. Brady shoots. He was an awful long way out. It hits Storaro and the Italians only briefly regain possession. And Ireland enjoying a decent spell here. Hendrick just inside the Italian half. To his left-hand side, James McCarthy spots there's plenty of room on the left-hand side for Stephen Ward. Onto the feet of James McLean. Infield now to Hendrick once again and back to Ward on the left-hand side. Ireland have the ball, but it's still inside the central third. Kevin Kilbar. Yeah, good bit of play. Robbie Brady took the strike and he did well initially. As you say, he's getting away from Serraro. I just think then he can free somebody up out wide. Don't take the strike on. He did brilliantly initially, Robbie Brady. Here is McLean, left-hand side of the midfield for the Republic of Ireland. Back through Ward to Kyo, sends one high down the channel and Daryl Murphy will chase after that. It bounces well, it bounces into the penalty area. Murphy tries to hold off the defender, Benucci swings it across some shot, which Sirigu was only able to punch away. Chance for Coleman, hits it, blocked by Agbonna. What an opportunity for the Republic of Ireland. Very uncertain defending from Italy and they very nearly gave away a goal. Coleman hit it low and hard and Agbonna was able to make the block with the goalkeeper in no man's land. Well, it's brilliant from Murphy initially. He gets Benucci backed off into the area and it was a poor pass from Motta. Give it straight to Coleman. Coleman didn't quite get hold of the strike, really. Good block from Agbonna at the end of it. But much, much better. These balls over the top are causing problems yeah. for the Italian defenders. It shows you again, we've, we've highlighted that so many times. Serious lack of pace and with the strength of Murphy and the pace of Shane Long. Free kick to the Irish, taken by McCarthy, taken short to Brady. Not his best delivery of the night, straight at Agbonna, who clears away. Ireland get the ball back on the halfway line, McCarthy turns and gives it all the way back to the goalkeeper, Darren Randolph. So Italy nil, Republic of Ireland nil here. Let's check in with the Sweden-Belgium game, John Akers. 12 minutes of the second half gone, Sweden nil, Belgium nil. Sweden heading out, Ibrahimovic playing out his interna international career here at the moment, if they can't find a goal. Belgium have been on top in the second half although it's Sweden who've had the only effort on goal Ekdal with a shot straight at Courtois Trevor Sinclair is watching alongside me yeah it looks like Sweden needs to start going for it soon because um, obviously they're going out if they don't get a, a win here need to start uh, throwing caution to the wind um, I'd, I'd expect to see uh, Eric Amron the manager 
the Sweden to start changing it sometime soon. Here's Ibrahimovic with a shot and almost runs for a Sweden player, but it's nil-nil. Thanks very much, John and Trevor. Neither Belgium or Sweden are yet 100% sure that they're going through to the last 16. Republic of Ireland must win. That's the very simple permutation here in Lille. 58 minutes on the clock, nil-nil against a much-changed Italy. And another free kick here for the Irish, who while we're away getting a report from the other game, had a chance as well with Shane Long. Kevin? Yes, I mean, that, that's the thing. Shane Long, good ball played forward from Seamus Coleman. He got into a good position. It's good defending, though, from Benucci, just to see Shane Long out of it. Free kick by Brady, headed down by Duffy, cleared away by Bonucci, just in front of his six-yard box. There's got to be better anticipation there from Daryl Murphy. There's only one area that Shane Duffy can head that back into, and all, all the Irish players, three Irish players, McLean, Long and Murphy, have both made four-post runs. One's got to anticipate to try to get across the near post. Substitution coming up for the Italians in just a moment and Matteo Darmian of Manchester United preparing to come on the man who according to recent newspaper reports is the, the Manchester United player who infamously asked the chef at the club to, to boil an egg for him to bring home because he didn't know how to do it uh, one of the more bizarre stories that came out at the end of this football season so Darmian preparing to come on defender it remains nil-nil here is De Chilio looking to clear it away. Daryl Murphy gets a brief touch, but Thiago Motta should be able to clear here, and he does to the right-hand side. And this is Bernardeschi. Tries to give it forward to Immobile, who's not a great service tonight. Let's see what can happen here. The left-hand side, De Chilio doesn't control well. Not an easy pass, mind you, but that goes out for a throw-in to the Republic of Ireland. It's not, but he's got to control that, Connor. He's, he's trying to control it on his right foot and take it into his path. Take it with your left foot, and then... Take your first touch right, it's actually a slight handball, but it was really good defending that from the chance that Shane Long had. I think it was handball when he initially controlled the ball, but Bonucci just gets his body across into a good position. So Bernadeschi is the man who makes way, and Matteo Darmian comes on here for the Italians. So an hour played exactly in Lille. Still no goals in this one. One goal might be enough for the Republic of Ireland to go through. At the moment, as things stand, Republic of Ireland and Sweden will be exiting the competition. Belgium will go through in second place along with Italy. They would be the only two to progress from this group. And in that situation, Northern Ireland would play France in Lyon. Wales would play Turkey, who would go through as the next best third place team. If Republic of Ireland, though, or Sweden were to get a goal and win their games that are taking place at the moment, then it would be Wales against Northern Ireland in Paris in the last 16. The Italians have got a free kick and they don't want to take it. Bit of time wasting here to try and frustrate the Irish from Florenzi. And of course the Italians can use that to their advantage here. They could frustrate the Irish a yeah. little bit knowing that a draw is no good to Martin O'Neill's team. And that's when they could hurt Republic of Ireland on the break as well, Connor. You know, they, they still are a, a slight threat, only a slight threat going forward. Not really showed it enough throughout. Florenzi prepares to take the free kick. Here it comes, right footed. That's a really good delivery, but headed away at the back for Ireland by Shane Duffy, who's in a busy game, both in uh, defence and in attack. And the header goes out of play on the far side for a throw into Italy. Yeah, Shane Long immediately on the front foot, looking to try to get Ireland up the pitch. Right, so, looks at the moment that... Darmian is just going to play that same role as Bernadetsky, right wing back. As Agbana lunges in on that Shane Long, and the referee says that is too much and it's a free kick. But I guess they've been clever, the Italians. They're giving away all these free kicks, but a long way away from the yeah. penalty area. And it's another foul as well. Very physical Agbana tonight, a couple of times. Perhaps there could have been fouls in the area where he was holding onto shirts and dragging back a little bit. Here comes Daryl Murphy for the Republic of Ireland into Hendrick. Can he shoot? He can, but it's always going off target just wouldn't sit up in front of him to steady himself he had to lash at it and it went wide to the target of several yards wide of the left hand side so don't forget earlier on today Iceland beat Austria by two goals to one incredible scenes in that one and it means that England will now play Iceland in Nice at 8 o'clock on Monday so England against Iceland brilliant game between Hungary and Portugal that finished 3-3 Portugal will have a difficult one they play Croatia in Lons and uh, Hungary who will play the runners-up in this group Group E which at the moment looks like it'll be Belgium so Hungary against Belgium as things stand here at Euro 2016 but a lot can change in the next half hour or so 
Here is James McLean, left-hand side of midfield for the Republic of Ireland. He's being fouled, fouled by Barzali, and that is a free kick to the Republic of Ireland to take it quickly. Hendrick to McLean, delivers it into the penalty area. Long doesn't even challenge against Ogbonna. Ogbonna with the serious height advantage over him. Ireland get it back again on the halfway line. James McCarthy to Shane Duffy. Zaza the only one chasing it for Italy. It's played back to Darren Randolph. It does a little sidestep around Zaza once again and passes it to the left-hand side and to Richard Kyo. Ireland in their final third. They need to get it forward. Nil, nil, no good tonight. Yeah, but I don't mind them keeping the ball out, Connor. They've got to, they've got to try to keep Hendrick in the game when they can. Richard keo has got to recognise he's in space. Give him the ball. He's, wanting, he's willing to accept it. Give him it. Here comes Seamus Coleman on the right-hand side. Five yards outside the penalty area. Stepping now into the box. Here he is on his left foot. His less favoured left foot. Coleman of Everton runs across the D, tried to slip it into the penalty area, but cleared away by Barzali. He had uh, both Murphy and McLean in there, and he just couldn't pick the pass. There's poor runs ahead of him, though, as well. You would expect one of the strikers, Daryl Murphy, show, you, show yourself up front up to him. Poor runs by the two strikers. Belgium, remember, only need a point tonight. Draw good enough for them. Let's get the latest. Hang on just in a moment. Here is Hendrick on the edge of the pedal area. He's done well there. Gives it to Brady on the left-hand side. Brady back out to Coleman on the right. The Italian defence a bit stretched, but it's a poor first touch from Coleman, who then is taken down, but I think the ball had been won comfortably before that. Uh, Duffy drills in a shot, and that's off target. So let's go to the Sweden-Belgium game, and the latest from John Akers. Sweden have had the ball in the back of the net. Ibrahimovic, but he was flagged offside. A nice finish with his left foot, though. A volley. Sweden showing some promise but Belgium still on top 0-0 thank you John could be the last we see of Zlatan Ibrahimovic in international football tonight Sweden could be on their way out of Euro 2016 and he's already confirmed he'll be retiring at the end of the competition here is Immobile good ball to Damian who's come on on the right hand side for Italy back in field to Immobile once again midway inside the Republic of Ireland half to his left hand side Alessandro Florenzi on to De Chilio, crossing position he's got Coleman close to him back into Immobile just outside the penalty area Florenzi hits it took a deflection on the way through deflected off one of his own teammates I think and that's gone out for a goal kick yeah, it's poor again poor in possession today it's the one, one big disappointing thing from the game Midfielders, we mentioned Motta. Motta's kept it simple at times, but been poor. Florenzi and Storaro, really, really poor at times when they've had simple passes on as well. Well, there's been so much noise in here under the closed roof in Lille. And if anything, a little bit of a lull in the crowd. Only a little bit, mind you, but Italians not delighted with what they've seen here at 0 0. Republic of Ireland knowing that a scoreless draw won't be good enough. We've just seen two blue Smurfs representing the Italian contingent in the crowd and our monitors. Here is Stephen Ward, 10 yards inside the Italian half. It's still there for the Republic of Ireland. One goal. That might be all they need to go through. They could still come second in the group. But realistically, get one goal, get third place, yeah. and the party continues here in France. That's exactly what it is. We know what's at stake now. You say as you approach the last stage of 25, 30 minutes to go, I would imagine there'll be a substitution made at some, uh, in the next five or ten minutes in Morton Hill. Just might just give it, the Italians something different to think about. It'll probably be an attacking one. You've still got Wes Hoolan on the bench. He's a player that can be creative. Just a glimpse there of one of your old teammates, Shea Given, running onto the pitch as the Italians refusing to be their own ball boys, refusing to get it. And Shea Given ran off the bench onto the pitch and kicked it over to where the free kick must be taken. My, we've discussed this earlier, Kevin, but my money, I'm sure everyone has, by now has seen the video on social media of the Irish fan with a horse's head on, kicking a ball through a window. I'm pretty sure that's Shea Given. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he snuck out of the camp. It's so accurate. <laughs> Yeah, it's really. If you haven't seen it, uh, I get on social media. Just put in Irish van horse's head, and I'm sure it'll come up for you. It's been fun here for the Ireland fans. There may only be 20 odd minutes of the fun remaining. Possession for Italy with Zaza. Ireland, remember, must score, must win the game, otherwise they go home. Nil nil would not be enough. No points for the moral victory tonight of maybe getting a draw. The ball is floated cross field. It was an attempted ball by Brady for long. It was just too high. And Martin O'Neill encourages down there, claps his hands, wants his team to keep their heads up. It was a right idea from Robbie Brady. He saw Shane Long in acres of space on the right hand side, but just a little bit over here. I just think, just give him Martin O'Neill a rethink now. He's gone back down to speak to Roy Keane and, and uh, Seamus McDonough, his assistant. So I'm sure he'll have a chat with all to see what sort of. Um, substitution he will be making now Italy have yet to have a shot on target in the game they've had two attempts at goal both wide 
As uh, Zaza here is fouled close to the halfway line by Richard Kyo, and that will be a free kick to the Italians, who increasingly are taking their, their time over these, which, well, you can't blame them for doing that. So, three quarters way through the match, Antonio Conte's hardly stopped moving down there, and he's very fashionable, dark navy jacket, almost matching shirt, almost matching tie, looking every inch the suave Italian as he observes proceedings down there. The ball goes out of play, and that will be possession back to the Republic of Ireland. Throw in at left back. No, sorry, it's a free kick. Free kick in amongst the central defenders. Activity on the bench for Ireland, and it looks like Aidan McGeady, who has come on as a sub in both of the opening group games before tonight, he is going to come on to try and add some width on the flanks. Yeah, just give Republic of Ireland a different option. We could even see someone like Stephen Ward going off. Robbie Brady going back to left back gives them yeah. two real attacking fullbacks then. And McGeady coming on, it's just an attacking substitution. Free kick is taken by Randolph towards the edge of the penalty area. Daryl Murphy tried to get up, but couldn't get the flick on it. And that goes out for a goal kick to the Italians away to our right hand side. Nil, nil here in Lille, where UEFA did not allow either team to train on the pitch here yesterday it cut up really badly in the French match against Switzerland and um, this is actually going to be the last time that this surface is used the pitch will be relayed after tonight it's uh, it's not helped either side so far it's not helped the spectacle of the game no not certainly not 21 minutes to go rash ball from is it Zaza down there and that's gone out of play on the far side so here comes the change for the Republic of Ireland and off comes Daryl Murphy the striker and on comes Aidan McGeady so we'll have a look at this does maybe James McLean yeah. move a bit more forward that will be one. as a striker I would imagine it be James McLean he's played a lot of the recent friendlies for the Republic of Ireland through the middle so he'll probably go with Shane Long James McLean that's probably how or he could even go with a three attack could change the system to a 4-3-3 McGeady on the right hand side Shane Long through the middle and then James McLean as an out and out left winger well, if Ireland were to go in front here, it would uh, make a nervous situation for Belgium. Hang on, here is James McLean. Chance, but it's on his less favoured right boot. And he hits it rather ugly outside of the right boot. He was outside the penalty area, mind you. But that goes way wide of the target. Yeah. If, if Ireland were to win this game, then Belgium would be in danger of going out should they lose to Sweden. Let's get the latest. John Akers. Zlatan Ibrahimovic has 20 minutes left uh, of his international career as it stands. Nil-nil here between Sweden and Belgium. Kevin De Bruyne is still the best player on the pitch. He's just had a shot from 25 yards. Really good save, Isaacson. And Sweden just made two subs. Gudetti and Dermaz both on. Nil-nil. Thanks very much, John. Well, uh, just as... Uh, Storaro there is a heavy touch and gives away possession easily. I mean, you know, the, the focus on this game tonight is whether Ireland can, can win the game. And obviously Italy have made all the changes. Yeah. But the Italians have made the, the world sit up and take notice of their opening two games. What do you think the, the report card will be on the Italians tonight? Well, we know it's a, a much changed side from particularly for the first game, wasn't it? So, I mean, even we, we spoke about before the game, would the changes affect the side? It certainly has tonight. They haven't looked as fluent. They haven't looked as, uh, as comfortable. I mean, the pitch hasn't added to that, which is something no. we've already spoke about, but they have been extremely poor in possession. Two strikers up front, Zaza and Immobile. There's no threat in behind Ireland. Ireland don't have an abundance of pace centrally themselves, but those two are always looking to come towards the ball. There's no one looking to provide that threat in behind between the two of them. Mistake by Florenzi. Allows McGeady pick up possession for the Republic of Ireland. Sends it crossfield from right to left. And uh, here comes Stephen Ward. He picked that up on the halfway line. He's now bearing down on the penalty area. Tries to shuffle into a crossing position. Loose ball. Goes back for McLean. Goalkeeper came and missed it. But there was nobody following up for the Irish. Coleman was the nearest to it. He couldn't get a touch of the penalty area. It was a chance. It was a real chance. Throw in is taken quickly. Coleman to McGeady. First chance for him to attack the penalty area. A little bit lazy as he sends in the left foot across. Didn't get the clean connection on it. Ireland get it back in the middle of the midfield with Kyo. Here is Robbie Brady. On to James McLean. To the left-hand side is Ward. Scoops it over the top. A little attempted flick on the inside step of his right boot from Robbie Brady. And he's... Uh, well, he can't pick out a teammate. It goes out for a throw-in to the Italians. Yeah, Kevin have seen the chance again. Good ball from McLean. Put into a good area. He's flapping, isn't he, Sirigu there? He's getting nowhere near it. Poor goalkeeping. Half chance. You see, it's half chance. Not, not one of the Irish players is prepared to go in and go and get on the end of it. Read the flight of the cross. One near post, one centre of the goal, one round the far post. They've all made the similar sort of run. All actually, actually looking for a bit of a pullback cross. So, poor runs from the Irish in the middle of the penalty area there. Still 17 and a half minutes of normal time remaining. 
This is Lille on Five Live for the BBC under the closed roof here. Lovely weather outside, but here under the roof, it's been a stalemate. Nil-nil between Italy and the Republic of Ireland. One goal could be enough to send the Irish through. Possession with James McCarthy on the halfway line helps it on to Hendrick. And here is Richard Kyo and on to Stephen Ward on the far side. So a reminder, if the Republic of Ireland were to win here tonight, then it would be Wales against Northern Ireland in Paris. If the Irish don't win, if Sweden don't win, Northern Ireland play France. The hosts in Lyon, Wales would take on Turkey. Those are the current permutations. Here come Ireland once again. Robbie Brady through the middle of the midfield. Lays it off to McGeady. Oh, for a moment he had a bit of space in front of him. Here he is, left footed, hit it too high. Got power behind it, but always rising and over the crossbar. Well, positive again. Hendrick in midfield, keeping the ball, keeping possession with McCarthy and Robbie Brady getting involved, then freeing up McGeady. McGeady's a little step over, looking to drive away from Serraro. Difficult one to keep down, though, on his left foot, going away from goal. Not quite got his body shape right. Another change for the Italians. Immobile will go off, and on in his place is the little... Napoli striker Lorenzo Insigne he's one of the shortest players at the tournament he is barely 5 foot 4 inches he's 6 centimetres shorter than Lionel Messi but he has come on now just to play in behind Simone Zaza as the Italians look for a goal that could give them 3 wins out of 3 yeah they certainly haven't deserved it have they with the performance Italy but you have to say, go back to the point, the Republic of Ireland haven't really created an awful lot of chances themselves for all the dominance that they've had with possession. Maybe like that telling ball, that real quality in the final third. That's the one thing you look at maybe up this first, what, 70-odd minutes of the game, Connor. Haven't really tested Sirigu enough. Much to discuss on the Five Live Social once the live football is over this evening. Marty will be joining Mark Chapman, Kevin Kilbal involved as well. It's the Five Live Euro Social and uh, with the last 16 very much taking shape by the time that programme starts we will know the exact outcome of the last 16 but England will play Iceland we know that uh, Portugal against Croatia that's going to be a tasty game in Lawns Wales still waiting to see if it'll be Turkey or Northern Ireland that they will be up against Northern Ireland who will either play uh, against, uh, against the Welsh or against the French and uh, we can discuss all that on the Five Live Football Social once the live football has ended here tonight in Lille possession with the Italians inside the Republic of Ireland half Italy pushing up now as uh, De Chilio on the left hand side with a good ball onto Florenzi into the penalty area surely that went out of play he pulls it back the linesman on the far side raises the flag it did go out of play it is a goal kick to Italy and the clock ticks on we're into the last quarter of an hour in Lille that's poor Connor, isn't it really poor from Florenzi just cross it with your left foot he's in a good position why take so many touches he's getting into the area really really poor the Irish fans singing of the fields of Athenry in Lille. Can they urge this team on? Would they have taken this at the start of the tournament? To have 14 minutes to play in Lille against a weakened Italy team knowing that one goal can put them through. I wonder, would Ireland have taken that scenario? Probably would, Connor. You yeah. have to say that. You know, you're in with a fighting chance. This is the one now, Connor. This is one I wanted to see. 15 minutes or so to go now. Wes and he can be a real creative spark. And he's done it when he's come off the bench recently. So it's all attack now. Throw in the kitchen sink at it from the Republic of Ireland as McCarthy, who was the only defensive-minded midfielder on the pitch, he's taken off. And Wes Hulahan, who scored against Sweden, Ireland's only goal of the competition, comes up. Here's Insigne. Oh, this is a really good run. Gets to the edge of the penalty. He's in the post. Brilliant shot from Insigne. Beat the goalkeeper hands down. It hits the post and it goes out on the far side. What a chance for Italy. And that very nearly ended the dream for the Irish there. Well, it's a brilliant run from Insigne. Another substitution have an impact on a game we've seen that so often pulling the jersey on James McLean but he battles on gives it to Hulan. Hulan tries to send it over the top that comes off an Italian defender good work in the midfield there by Stefano Storaro Italy have it on the halfway line and back into Diego Motta and on to Florenzi once again and now Ireland are playing with Shane Long up front and then there's a line of about five attacking midfielders just in behind him all coming to join the attack whenever they can Italy in possession Angelo Agbona turns from inside the Irish half, gives it back to Leonardo Banucci. And here is Barzali on the right hand side. Good ball forward to Zaza, allowed it past his body and very nearly into the dangerous Insigne. 
What a call that would have been, Kevin. Oh, it would have been a great call. You could see exactly what he's trying to do. He's just opening his body out, trying to bend it beyond Randolph. There was a defender, I think it was Shane Duffy, that was in between as well in the line of sight, just bending it beyond him. Actually, Keogh, both in the really unlucky, good efforts. Best spell of play for Italy, who I've been very, very poor in this game. Yellow card for Barzali there, for the Italians. And he goes in the notebook along with the goalkeeper, Sirigu, who's booked in the first half. Uh, Shane Long and Stephen Ward in the referee's notebook for the Republic of Ireland. But none of the players who would be on a suspension should they pick up a yellow card tonight have so far been cautioned. The clock ticks on. Less than 12 minutes of normal time to go in Lille. Remember, the Republic of Ireland must win. It's nil-nil for the moment. Good tackle there by Seamus Coleman, but he might have been clipped. He was by Insigne afterwards. He felt that Seamus Coleman referee gives the free kick. He gave it a little bit delayed reaction there, and the Italians weren't too keen on that. Well, here we go now, Conor. You thought in the last 10 minutes, this is a big spell now. So many goals in this tournament have been decided late on. Darren Randolph taking the free kick. The island can have the luxury now of putting bodies into key areas further up the pitch. Tens of thousands of Irish have travelled here to France. They don't want to go home. They want to stay on and enjoy the party as the ball is put out of play on the far side by Matteo Damian. And it's a throw into the Republic of Ireland inside Italian territory. Stephen Ward of Burnley prepares to take the throw in. He's got McLean in front of him. Not much movement, mind you. Robbie Brady comes short. Wes Houlihan now runs and it is thrown to Wes Houlihan. Poor first touch from Houlihan, though. Ball taken away from him. Ireland get it back again with Ward on the left, up towards Shane Long, jumps in the air, beats Benucci. McLean can't get it down on the deck, but Wes Houlihan can, and he swivels away from Storaro, and now he's motoring into Italian territory, to the right-hand side, Aidan McGeady, four weight in around the penalty area for the Republic of Ireland, it's a terrible cross from McGeady, it's a daisy cutter straight at the goalkeeper, and that is a wasted opportunity, he must do better. Yeah, he should, you know, he's... he's usually Ed McGeady will always look to try and beat the player on the outside that time he just shifted on to his right foot just trying to create a little bit of space for himself but it was a, a miss hit on the cross easy for Sirigu to deal with Insigne is looking really good since coming on plays a 1-2 here with Damian crossing position now on the right hand side for the Italian skips away from McLean infield comes Insigne again great movement from the little man out to the right hand side where Storaro has to stretch but not much pressure on him as he gathers the ball has time to place it in and then Shane Duffy right in front of his own goalkeeper heads it out for a corner to the Italians who are beginning to look dangerous yes, now they are. the substitutions have certainly helped them Insigne has made a big impact for Italy good ball in there and again Shane Duffy has the first half he has to deal with it he's not certain of what's behind him Dan Randolph coming through bodies but good defending from Duffy another change coming for the Italians another attacking Minded player Stephen Al Sharaway of Roma just joined Roma permanently only yesterday from AC Milan, and he is going to come on in place of Mattia De Cilio, who's been playing as the the left wing back. So fresh legs on for the Italians with El Sharaway, who they call the Pharaoh in the squad. His father's from Egypt. Here is the corner from Insigne on the right hand side. Didn't beat the first defender. Comfortably cleared away by Jeff Hendrick. Republic of Ireland have had a few chances. Nine minutes to go, Kevin. Is there a twist to come in this turn? Well, I'm certainly hopeful of that, yet. Yeah. I mean, you would expect, you know, in the last five minutes or so of the match, there will be more bodies. Ireland are going to have to go for it. They're going to have to send bodies forward. That might create problems for them defensively. I know that, but there's going to come a spell. There's going to come a time in this game when the players have got to recognise they need to get it forward and you've got to get bodies around Shane Long or McGeady or... Whoever it would be that's getting into four position, they've got they've got to start sensing that that time will come very quickly. How much do you think is left in the tank? Just looking at the body language yeah, of the players. Yeah, they look a bit jaded. They do look a little bit jaded, but they put in a really good performance here, a better performance than certainly that Belgium game. Robbie Keane, Ireland's record goal scorer, is preparing to come on. This will be the last throw of the dice for Martin O'Neill. Robbie Keane, who scored more goals in an Irish jersey than anybody else. Oh, that's a good one-two played by Florenzi. Chance for him to shoot, and the shot is well blocked. Well, actually, well, I thought the shot was blocked. It's actually a, a bad shot. It's skewed off his foot from Florenzi, and that will not be a corner. That's wide for a goal kick. No, again, it's another player that lost his footing. So it's a lovely little one-two with Motta. So shades of 2002 when you were involved, Kevin, in that Ireland-Germany game 
And Robbie Keane right at the very yeah. death. And we had now Quinn come on. Now Quinn came on as our, one of our most experienced players that day. He created the goal for Robbie Keane when Robbie was a youngster himself. So certainly hopeful if Robbie can't score, he can certainly create one. Who wants to become an Irish hero? Seven minutes of normal time to go. If one of these Irish players can nick a goal, there'll be statues built in their honour, there'll be songs written about them. But can they get that goal? As Duffy sprays it out to the left-hand side, Ward does well to help it on to McLean. Across comes Barzali, and he's given it away to Hulahan on the left-hand side. Left-footed cross. Looks like it's going to be too high for McGinty. McGinty actually got his head to it, but then couldn't get any power, and it's saved by the goalkeeper. So, at the moment, as things stand, Italy and Belgium will be going through. How's it going in that game between the Swedes and the, the Belgians? Hang on, here is Wes Hulahan. This is the chance. Can he score a save by the goalkeeper? What an opportunity. Hulahan is put through one-on-one. -on -one. The Italian defence made a right mess of that. And Sirigu, the goalkeeper, saved it. But Hulahan will be disappointed with the shot. He's one-on-one. -on -one. He doesn't get a clean connection. The goalkeeper saves. That was the moment. That was when the Republic of Ireland could have got through. Here's a chance down the other end. Shot by El Shari. And it's saved by Randolph. We will go for an update on Sweden and Belgium in a moment. But what about that, Kevin oh, Kilbao? Oh, Connor, that's the big chance we've been crying out for. What a glorious chance for Wes Hulahan. Benucci actually looking to dive. I think the referee saw it was a dive. Fell to Hulahan. Here is Hulahan. Could pull into the pit. There he is! It's scored! Robbie Brady scores the goal to put the Republic of Ireland in front. The substitutes invade the pitch. The Irish fans... Sweden-Belgium game. They've had a goal too, John Akers. Nyangaland from long distance. Brilliant goal from Belgium. Belgium will be heading through second. Sweden and Zlatan will be out. It's Sweden nil. Belgium won a stunner. So goals finally coming in both of these games tonight in Group E. The Republic of Ireland taking the lead. Robbie Brady's header. 1-0 they lead the Italians. And Belgium taking the lead ahead of Sweden. As things stand at the moment, if Republic of Ireland win here, then Wales will play Northern Ireland in Paris. What about that for a last 16 game? The group as it stands, Italy top, we knew that anyway. Belgium will join them on six points. The Republic of Ireland on four points. That will be enough to go through as one of the best third place teams. It'll be enough if they hold this lead. It's about to be a very long four minutes plus stoppage time for the Republic of Ireland. Italy's pride bruised here. What will their response be? Into the penalty area from Barzali. Cleared away by Seamus Coleman. Suddenly Ireland have switched from being all-out attack to all-out defence. El Sharaway into the penalty area, sends it in. There's a slip, but McLean is there and he clears it away. And then the referee blows the whistle. Now what is this for? He's given a free given kick a foul, yeah. and a free kick to the Irish. Well, it just settles everybody down. Happening. Just settles everybody down now, Connor. What a goal! What a moment! Brilliant from Wes Hulahan, who didn't let the, the miss, the miss chance that he had, distract him. What a glorious chance it was! Thirty seconds later, he provided a, a wonderful cross, and Robbie Brady eyes on the ball. He doesn't even have his eye on Sirigu. Sirigu comes out. He flaps at it a little bit, but credit Robbie Brady gets beneath, beneath, between Benucci and Barzali and what a header what a moment in Irish football history and if it stays like this it'll be France against the Republic of Ireland in the last 16 oh we'll take that look at the Irish fans Kevin I mean scarves being twirled in the air Amazing. people taking photos videos to be sent home it's a wish you were here moment it's a I was here moment to tell the grandkids about if the Republic of Ireland can recreate 
the scenes of USA 94 if they can beat Italy at a major tournament. McGeady's had an impact. He makes a tackle here. This is Hulan. Just to point out, by the way, Robbie Keane, who was all ready to come on at yeah. 0-0, will now not be coming on. He's gone back and, and put his tracks in on. Looks like Stephen Quinn is going to come on down there. Republic of Ireland of possession, as long as they do not concede, it'll be Northern Ireland against Wales in the last 16. It'll be Ireland against France. Don't know when they're beaten. Here is McLean. It's been a really the good performance, on. Connor. What a performance. That Martin O'Neill asked for a response and he got a response in this game. Fabulous performance from them all. Ball comes out of play on the far side. It's a throw into the Irish. And a guttural roar of come on you boys in green from the Irish fans. All the replica jerseys of different eras, of different tournaments. They have travelled to support the team. We saw the scenes with the Northern Irish fans. Well, it's Ale Lever because both both teams from the island of Ireland at the moment are going through to the second round. Wales are going through. England are going through. What a tournament it's being for the home nation. Brilliant, Connor. Absolutely brilliant. And we said there's got to come a time that you're going to have to send bodies forward. Robbie Brady took that chance. He knows full well that the quality that Wes Hulham possesses and he just drove he was just all eyes on the ball he was committed and what a good goal at the end of it what a really good finish I mean the goalkeeper you know take that aside it was poor goalkeeper from Sirigu but that is this has been a really dominant display by, by the Republic of Ireland Italy have had five attempts at goal in the game Ireland have had 12 which just shows how Martin O'Neill's team have gone for it here is the last change now Stephen Quinn will come on as a fresh pair of legs he'll replace Shane Long Shane Long who turns and waves both arms at the Irish fans and gets them to drill up some support it's very important the Republic of Ireland keep their concentration now it is bedlam in Lille for the noise is rising into the air bouncing off the roof the closed roof here and rebounding back down onto the pitch Quinn comes on for Long we mentioned a Quinn coming on in a famous late Ireland goal in the past <laughs> Has it happened again? Will it be enough? 1-0 the Republic of Ireland lead. The context will be that Hungary will play Belgium in Toulouse as things stand on Sunday. It'll be Wales against Northern Ireland. It'll be France against the Republic of Ireland. That's the way it is at the moment. Wales, Northern Ireland on Saturday in Paris at Parc de France. That will not be one to miss. There are three minutes being added on for stoppages at the end of this game. I don't know if I can take. I don't know, Connor. Three minutes. I can't take it. Obviously, I've gone here. What a moment! What a brilliant moment! Throw into the Republic of Ireland. Conte's down there having a word. The fourth official has been called over. The referee is talking to Jeff Hendrick. It's all kicking off here down at the pitch. And the Republic of Ireland have suddenly become the country very happy to waste time. The Italians who were wasting time for, what, when was the goal scored? 85th minute. For 85 minutes, the Italians very happy to waste time. Now, though, they want the urgency because the Italians don't want to lose this game. We already know it'll be Italy against Spain in the next round, but they don't want to lose this. Martin O'Neill calling for a ball, playing the ball boy. And the reason he wants the ball is because he can then slow it down and give it very slowly to Coleman. And he's delighted there's a second ball on the pitch. And the Republic of Ireland just tried to kill the game off here. We've played a minute of the three. Coleman throws it. Looking for Stephen Quinn. He won't get a touch. It goes out by the corner flag. It is a goal kick to Italy. But it's Robbie Brady's goal that is on the verge of becoming a famous moment in the history of football for the Republic of Ireland. Can it be the goal that puts them through to the last 16? It was looking so unlikely at the start of the day. It's not over yet, of course. Florenzi drills it out to the right-hand side. Darmian up to Zaza, loses the ball. Huge cheer from the Irish fans. McGeady, 10 yards outside the penalty area, very calmly rolls it back to Darren Randolph, who then puts a huge boot on it 
and sends the ball into Italian territory. We've almost played two of the three minutes. Italy on the attack. El Sharawi might have been a handball on the left-hand side. Play answers the referee. This is Insigne. Right-footed ball into the penalty area. Duffy gets up and wins the header. He's roared on by 20,000 Irishmen. The ball goes out of play. Martin Eels' hands are in the air. It's not over yet, but it's a throw-in. Throw-in to the Republic of Ireland. 45 seconds to go. Darren Randolph's got a little smile on his face. And the Irish fans are ready to give Lille a party tonight. The likes they have never seen. We've lost Kevin Kilbane. Italy nil, Ireland won. The goal from Roddy, Robbie Brady, a header, just seconds after what had been a terrible miss by Wes Hoolan. We hardly had a chance to discuss that, Kevin. Hoolan must be the most relieved man down there. But you know what? He, he gathered his thoughts, Connor. Do you know, he, he, he's, he's got real quality in the final third, Wes Hoolan. But after missing that glorious chance, the best chance of the game, he, he picked himself up. That's it. No, isn't it, though? No. The, the Republic of Ireland bench are on the pitch celebrating. Martin O'Neill is shaking hands with Antonio Conte. But this game is not over. It's not over yet. <laughs> Martin O'Neill can't Killing believe me. it. He was on the pitch celebrating. It is possession for the Republic of Ireland. We've played three minutes, 20 seconds. There was supposed to be three minutes added on. Free kick to Ireland in the Italy half. Houlihan wants to take it. Insigne won't move back 10. Hulan plays it towards the corner flag into Stephen Quinn. Can he control? That is it! The full time whistle blows. And look at these scenes. Robbie Brady sets off, running to the Irish fans to acclaim him as the hero. The cross from Hulan, the header from Robbie Brady. And with Randolph jumping in in the celebrations, the Irish fans are not going home. Along with the Republic of Ireland and Wales and North Northern Ireland and Wales, we're all staying on. Change the flights home, Kevin Gilbert. It Gilbert. doesn't get any better than this, does it? We want it. We were desperate today. We didn't want to. We didn't want to be too positive coming into it, did we? But what a moment for Robbie Brady. And I said before, I fancied our chances, Connor. I knew full well. I see in this Italian team so often they don't dominate possession. They don't go and create a bundle of chances. We saw them against Belgium, and that was obviously the little worry for me. But I knew that we could have with one big moment, one big game in the side, and. What a moment it was. It's come from Wes Hoolan and Robbie Brady with that amazing goal. What a moment. The context, the permutations, they are all now done. Republic of Ireland are through. They have finished third in the group. Italy were always going to top Group E. Belgium have got that second place. They will play Hungary in the second round. But the Republic of Ireland will go to Lyon to play the hosts, France. And this party is set to continue. We now also know it will be Wales against Northern Ireland. We know it will be England against Iceland. But the Republic of Ireland are celebrating here. And Robbie Brady, oh, I think he's picked it's out a brother, relative. Yeah, it's his, it's brother. his brother in the crowd. Robbie Brady kisses his brother, who red-faced is in floods of tears. These really are fantastic scenes in Lille. I've seen down there Jeff Hendrick, who's been a friend of Robbie Brady's, since they were born they were born just two weeks apart their parents became friends they've been in the same team since they were six and here they are on the pitch in Lille and they've delivered a victory for the Republic of Ireland and they've not just beaten anyone they've beaten Italy oh Connor, it's amazing it really is amazing I'm just so happy for the for, for Martin O'Neill for his staff for the players and, and of course the supporters if They've, they've, they've done us all proud coming over to, to France. They've, they've served our country really well, Connor. This is this is incredible, amazing. Robbie Brady is so emotional. He's actually gone pale, embracing James McCarthy down there. The smile returning to his face. Brady, whose delivery from set pieces was spot on tonight throughout, but a team effort has delivered. They have denied the Italians a goal. They have kept the clean sheet. They have won a game. Let's just put this in context, Mark Chapman. It's the first time the Republic of Ireland have won a game at a European Championships since 1988 when that famous Ray Houghton goal beat Italy. I be beat, beat England. It's, it's Yo, been God, now I'm me, losing it now. It's been a long time between drinks. There'll be a few tonight. Italy nil, Republic of Ireland won.